front row. <laughs> can I uh, get a microphone here, please? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I wanted to um, thank you um, so much because you uh, moved us in the right way from theory into practice. And it was a very good start and uh, in, in, in this way you act as a bridge in between the first panel and uh, tomorrow's panels. Um, what you showed us from uh, Hong Kong to Iraq and to Pulau Bin, are they examples of what, what we cannot do so far? So uh, we are not able to uh, work on the uh, content of knowledge in such complex system that you are uh, presenting us. And Pulau Bin seems so tiny, but uh, uh, there's so much there. When, when I was thinking at the um, performances, uh, the question is, uh, do, are we still linked to the um, actions and to the rituals that are performed in those temples, or uh, is just something that belongs to the past so that it is gone, essentially. And we have just a few data left in the present. And um, going to Meridel for, for, for Iraq, uh, I think it's, it's wonderful and amazing. It's the real link in between heritage and a future, uh, how we can use it. But the question is, uh, is there a chance to fully use the um, heritage knowledge that we have in that region for the people that are living there that seems so far away from their past? Or is it just our illusion? So, is Say the that again, so far away. So, uh, are they so far away from their past? Or is it just our illusion because we have an ideology that is pushing their past so far away from, from them. So is it true or, or not that they are far away from their past? Um, and uh, for Hong Kong, it was amazing what, what where you were working on for the, um, for the intangible uh, heritage linked to the um, acceptance of the uh, UNESCO uh, conventions by China. And um, having this, uh, this experience in, in Hong Kong, you added another layer. So is the nation inside the nation? Is the relationship between communities? As you were saying, for Pulau Bin is a small island, but here is a city with a very established community that is linking to another one. And the question is, uh, when you are working on intangible cultural heritage, are you taking care in Hong Kong of the at least two layers of the identities? So being in Hong Kong, and being in China at the same time, which happens. Thank you. Who would you like to respond first? Oh, maybe first we, we can start from uh, we for Pulau Bin. But essentially it is the same question, you know, rephrased in three ways. I'm not quite sure if I understood. Well, the question. Um, he's asking you how far away from, how are they too far away from Okay, the all right. Um, the thing is that, um, of course, the distance to the past varies for different people. So uh, what I was showing in the photographs is that there are quite young people who are participating in these rituals, and for them it's not past. They don't think about it as past. As Professor Liu said, when you know, uh, the word heritage was translated as what dead people left behind, and nobody wanted to uh, kind of um, uh, be associated with it. But, and they said that they are living people, so they are still doing it. So I think this is the, this is the, the kind of uh, difference between history and heritage. History may be some, a study of the past. It may be uh, of events that happened in the past. But heritage, heritage is the continuation of the past into the present. And that is the thing that we are looking at. How has it continued into the present? So the god topic gong, I mean, you know, maybe you know, he, his origins may be, so maybe, uh, a few hundred years ago, but the worship of him has continued into the present, and it may not be the same. And, and we are not into like purity kind of issues, but the fact that people are living their culture, so people are practicing it for their own present, you know, perspective and for their own motivations. Yes. 
Um, so I have a friend there who grew up in one of the little villages. He's actually gotten his PhD from Stony Brook in New York and, and um, you know, NYU, and he's back there again. But he told me this story when I met up with him in New York that his grandmother, it, that it, he, so he's in his 40s, mid 40s, and his grandmother, when he was little, would point to Venus and say, first of all, she, what she would do is she'd take red dye from her weaving and she would point paint a cross on his head, or a little star on his head, and she'd also put it on all of the sheep. And she'd point to Venus and say, you better look out because she's going to take you. And it was the story coming back from Inanna, from Mesopotamia, and it's about the spring floods. And it's about, they call the spring floods the um, Rosh Hashanah, the New Year. And so those stories do come down, not as much, very scantly, because imagine everybody was terrified and driven out for 10 years. So, but, but basically when they're coming back, they're still living in this building, weaving the same buildings that their ancestors built, you know, 8,000 years ago. So it's much more present, their history, but whether if they know that it's Inanna, whether they've been to Ur at this point or not, that's time will, time will tell what the schools will do about this. But they are really, with the change that I've seen in the five years, is that they're calling themselves Mesopotamians. And that's the solidification of, of their distinction of themselves in the South from the rest of the South, which are all Shia. So I think there's a better chance than, um, I mean, there's a good chance that, they'll, that, they, that this will increase. And so in the garden itself, as I, I, I'm, I'm a ways away where I have to work with people now, as we make that graphic, that ceramic graphic, what are the stories that we're gonna put in there? I have a ways to go with that of what exactly will be the appropriate iconography, but there is this one Mesopotamian story that everyone knows that I would really like to make a light work about. So, um, anyway. Okay, and for Hong Kong? Okay. Uh, one thing, uh, you may consider Hong Kong as a pretty urbanized area, and, but actually that we still have uh, quite a, a large uh, rural area and villages that they have been settled there for uh, several hundreds of years. So we still have quite uh, a large number of local uh, traditions being maintained. Yeah, yeah, that the new territories. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the issue of identity, I think, is very important even uh, in the uh, China's will. I think that's the reason that why that uh, when we submit our applications to the national list, uh, the all our applications get accepted. So either that uh, we did a very good job, or uh, they would like to uh, accept all our applications. Because this is one way that, uh, in a cultural way, that to show Hong Kong is part of China. So that we have Hong Kong's items on the national list, that's, that's to say that we are part of the Chinese culture. But uh, at the, I think uh, we can have more than one identity uh, at, at a time. So when, when we do our research, that we, we understand that uh, local people, they do have a very strong idea of their own community. That's the reason that why they are willing to spend time and money to maintain their activities. So for them, that there's no reason uh, uh, for them why they carry out this activity. For the, or for the tourists, they need reasons to justify to come out to see the activity because all oh, this is a long tradition or because something happened in the past, so they develop this activity. But for the lo local people, they, they need no reasons. This is just the time when they need to come back to participate, just for that reason. So, uh, uh, so that, that's, I, I think, uh, the Isaac actually that uh, in our experience, give the local people a new, uh, 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 dimension, new way to maintain their ancestral uh, uh, activity. So that's uh, what, what we can see, the positive side of the ICC system uh, happening in the last several years. Okay. Um, is there one? Okay, let's, let's, uh, we're gonna make this the last one, um, but if I can remind you that we're all having drinks together in an hour or so anyway, so our speakers will be there. You can ask them one-to-one -one questions. But yes, let's just take this last one. Okay, it, uh, thank you very much. All of these papers were fantastic, fantastic, so different. Uh, to Dr. Wee, uh, 
uh, I was trying to reflect on what puts together heritage, uh, what links di the different uh, disciplines we have here. So uh, scientists, uh, anthropologists, historians with the idea of heritage. And the keynote session we had in the morning, uh, namely the concept that no knowledge of history uh, changes the perception of present and of course of future. And in this sense, there is not such a marked difference between living traditions and traditions that are gone, because in many ways they still influence and inform our present. So I would not make such a big difference between uh, history and heritage, saying that heritage is living and history is not, because, it's because it is. It's simply in other ways. And this is why it's so interesting for us to study it. So um, perhaps there will be more occasions to, to, to soften this boundary. And to um, Mary Dale footnotes, uh, we should keep talking about gardens and um, your recovery, what Andrea was also asking, uh, is it possible to, what is possible to uh, reconstruct in such a garden? There is now in Italy a quite significant movement of restoring and rethinking old gardens uh, I just quote briefly two examples. One is a new garden, which gives a new sense to a place that was a garden and was destroyed. And uh, it was a medicine garden in a monastery in Venice. And a completely new garden was built on it, trying to interpret as a metaphor the old sense it had, but not the form, because we don't know it. Another one is an existent garden, of the 17th century, uh, which is exactly preserved, but we, we don't have the sense anymore. So the research was to try to find out the use of it. So the praxis, the living, so the revived tradition around it. This is a magic garden, and much magic music and operas have been composed for this garden, but they have never been perform performed there anymore. So it could be a good idea, perhaps, to associate these two gardens are twins now. Perhaps the, the Iraq garden could be the third of, of them. So thank you. Thank you. It's lovely. Th thank you for your comment. Um, I'm going to have to wind it up because there's a performance uh, following us. So thank you very much for attending the panel. Thank you very much to our three speakers. They, to reiterate your point, they really wear three lovely papers. And uh, we'll see you at the next event. Thank you.